Thor Love and Thunder is entering the realm of Greek gods, and we're about to see a lot of great CGI's of this mythical city from the looks of the trailers. We're approaching to the new Thor movie premiere date which is scheduled to be released in July. By now there are three different movies with this title in the MCU and the third one is the most appreciated by fans. So it's not a surprise that Taika Waititi was chosen to direct this one as well. Now Disney being this big as an entertainment company and having this much audience makes a good topic for creators including us to talk about everything that's been going on with its projects. But something that has been missing from the coverage is the details in visuals and the scenery in the production design, so we're here to talk about that. Now if you have watched Thor Ragnarok, you probably remember the colorful architecture and interior design sets of Sakaar. We see some of that in these new trailers, but it looks like we're not gonna spend much time watching these retro designs in this movie. And instead we're gonna see a lot of monochromatic action scenes and a lot of classical Roman style places. We've analyzed the official trailers for this movie frame by frame to have a better understanding about the architectural design. And there are two places that catches your eyes the most. One is the new Asgard and the other is the quote unquote Mount Olympus. If you're here to watch that part, feel free to skip to the next chapter. But first, let's talk about the new looks for the new Asgard. Remember, the last time we saw this place was in the Avengers Endgame, and it was this northern grey city that felt a bit depressing. But now Asgard seems to have become a tourist attraction. And as you can see, these golden buildings in the new Asgard looks quite similar to the buildings in the original one that was destroyed in the last movie. They seem to have tried to display their alien culture to attract more ordinary people to the city. In the second trailer we see more of this place, but in both of them there are four buildings that poke out of the city more than others. On the far right we have a building that looks like it's borrowed the concept of an Asgardian armor designed for its appearance. It has a curved shape and there's a tower on the rear part of the building that looks like a lighthouse. There are spear shaped grills on the facade and a circular building that might be a courtyard is placed in front of it. The second interesting building seems to have a tall pyramid tower at the back and a large hall in front of it. There's two angular shapes and a big console on top of the hall. I must say these buildings being this far in these scenes might have overlaps with the neighboring structures, so there might be some shapes missing in the details. The third building seems to be formed of two arcs placed on top of each other. It's almost completely behind a vintage style building, so the design might look like this with a bit of guesswork. The fourth one on the shoreline being closer to the camera is the easiest to analyze, and it seems to be the main port for the boat in front of it. Compared to the scale of the buildings next to it, it looks quite tall, and it's got a slight shape roof on top. As you can see, it follows the Asgardian building patterns which have curved corners, like in the water facing side of the facade. The back of a building pushes in, and the height is reaching to the top. Of course the details you see in these sketches are reconstructed with lots of guesswork and we had to complete the designs with the information we had on our hand from the previous movies. Now let's get to the interesting part, Olympus in the MCU. Based on what we see in the footage of the official trailers, we can choose four scenes to break down the way they portrayed the Olympus in this movie. The first one is the floating gardens of Olympus that forms the glorious mythical city in the clouds that we see a lot in paintings on this subject, like in the works of Francisco Bayou and Giulio Romano. The way they designed this place is really interesting, from the details they adapted from Roman architecture to these adequates that create a network of, for the lack of a better word, city blocks. Although there was no need for the way support for these bridges, you can see how they still included these columns to resemble more of a Roman architecture atmosphere. 
because columns, or in the technical terms, orders, are one of the most important characteristics of the Roman architecture. We'll talk more about these characteristics in the last chapter. This is the drawing for this scene that shows two blocks connecting to each other with these aqueducts. They designed these spaces to feel more organic with trees and plants, and at the same time kept the royal golden color palettes that again is extracted from mythical paintings of Mount Olympus. Next stop is the walkway we see in the following scene. And again, we see a lot of details in this row of building that seems to be mirrored on both sides. Not having a base means these buildings need to be concluded on bottom as well as on top. But the tricky part is the gravity that stays the same. And you can say these structures are hovering in space instead of just saying there's no gravity. The farther these buildings get in these scenes, the harder it gets to see what's going on in their design. But you can see the gist of it in these drawings. The third space that has the most recognizable details is the Pantheon of Gods. This place has the most resemblance to the Roman era paintings, especially in the works of Giulio Romano. Again, the color palettes are pretty much the same, and the marble textures that are used on the floor and the railings of podiums are surely another element adapted from the Roman style architecture. There are multiple layers to these spaces. The outer layer is the big dome surrounding the Pantheon, the buildings and these huge columns that are forming a circle are the second layer, and at the center is the main platform with this belt around it that these auditorium seatings are placed on it. This marble podium that hovers slowly to the platform is where Zeus stands, and as you can see it's not as curved as other objects in these seats. And finally, let's compare these designs with Roman architecture characteristics. The most famous one is the columns, or again, as we said before, the orders. Mainly, there are three different types, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. We see a lot of Ionic orders in these scenes, but there are a number of places that they use Corinthians too. Another element is the coffers. They are these decorative sunken panels that were used to reduce the weight of the building, mainly in domes and the ceilings. Next one is these bars of stonework that comes in both arched and straight sections, and I'm not gonna even try to pronounce the name. And these are called cornice, and you can see them throughout the design projecting along the facade. One thing that's been missing from the design of these buildings is the iconic triangular pediments of Roman architecture. If you manage to spot one, please tell us in the comments. And that's about it for these trailers. We can't wait for the premiere of this movie and surely there's a lot for us to break down in it. So make sure to subscribe for more architectural contents. Until then, this was the Architecture of Thor. My name is Abba and thank you for watching.